piece can be extremely important for a ballistics expert, and that's our job. One of our jobs is to collect even the tiny fragments and submit those for evidence because they may be very crucial. And one side of that uh, x-ray is very dark. Is that something that would hide uh, the bullet, either maybe the blood or something that caused that to be dark? No, that actually means that the, uh, the lung is collapsed and that side of the chest is full of air and blood. And that's all that means. It would, it would not obscure a, a bullet or a fragment of a bullet. Even the size of a pinhead would show up in something like this. And Dr. Sperry, uh, in terms of classifying this, this uh, do you have an opinion as to whether it was m less likely or more likely that this was done by a 45 caliber bullet or a 38 caliber bullet? In my opinion, it was more likely that it was done by a 38 caliber bullet as opposed to the suggested 45 caliber silver tip because again the silver tip bullets in chest shots especially because this is going across from the left to the right so it's really the widest part of the human body that this bullet is going through it is highly unlikely that it should exit even if it did exit it would have mushroomed and begin to fall apart and pieces would be left in the chest behind to be seen at an x-ray and of course recovered during the autopsy and in the absence of any of that in my opinion, more probably, it was a 38 caliber bullet. Now, you have seen the um, report that was given by uh, Dr. O.C. Smith, the medical examiner who reviewed this case uh, for the purpose of the clemency hearing. Yes. Uh, and he said that, uh, that the wounds could have been made by the Winchester 45. Uh, do you have any reaction to the use of that phrase or whether that's totally wrong or whether, whether it's, uh, I mean, just what would you suggest about that? Well. I can't sit here and tell you today that absolutely it was not the 45 silver tip. All I can tell you is from the standpoint of probabilities and also if this were if this were a case of mine and I were going to court an autopsy I had done the standard that I need myself in order to provide testimony in a murder trial is 90 to 95 percent certainty or better because of the stakes that are involved. I have people's lives based to, you know that are on you know, sometimes what I say makes a great deal of difference sometimes life or death. From that perspective, I could not tell you specifically that it, that it was or wasn't a 45 or a 38 that caused this. In other words, if I was asked the question, do I have an opinion as to what bullet it was, I could not tell you because I could not meet that level of certainty. However, I think more probable than not that it was the 38 and not the 45 because of everything that I've seen before in my career everything that I expect the silver tip to do and we see a lot of these over and over again and it's, it's it's standard I mean we expect to find the bullet in the jacket because these are designed just not to exit and to cause a lot of internal damage without finding these things up in in the x-ray here and nothing of course was found during the autopsy it would lead me to believe that this was not the 45 silver tip thank you doctor I appreciate your, your testimony Thank you. And I'll Thank you, gentlemen. turn it back to Mr. Dorsey. Thanks. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Mr. Wilson, I believe the rules that you asked for were everyone was to remain silent during this. Yes. Would you please instruct the people in the back of this room to maintain the silence? Now, <clears throat> unfortunately, we're running out of time. And did you take my notebook when you moved? We're running, we're running out of time. So I'm going to have to breeze through some things that I really wish I had more time to cover. And uh, a lot of this, I, I really, I would request that the governor take a careful look at the submissions we've made in this, because. A lot of the information that I just have to kind of breeze over is in there in depth. Yes. We'll, get, we'll get him all that information. I appreciate it, sir. Now, one of the things that uh, was testified to at the trial by Officer Stoddard ah. Officer Stoddard uh, testified that. As I stopped, uh, I was getting out of my car, I saw Lieutenant Oliver and another male, white, walking out of the door toward my direction where I was getting out. As they got outside the door, the male white broke and started to run. Lieutenant Oliver hollered, hold it. He reached out 
grabbed around him like that. They fell out in the parking lot. The guy fell. Lieutenant Oliver didn't go all the way down. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, later on cross-examination, the defense attorney is cross-examining him. He says, uh, when, the, when the first fall occurred, it was on the windy side of the curb? Stoddard answers, yes, sir. Question, all right. Then the struggle began that extended all the way across the curb there into the next lot. Yes, sir. Do you know whether anyone tripped or fell going across the curb? Answer, no one tripped or fell. I heard something hit the curb, which I thought was a police radio. I thought it was Lieutenant Oliver's radio. I later learned that it was a flashlight and not a radio. Well, a lot of what I've asked for and, and in this case uh, is just to apply common sense and see whether these things could have happened. We already know, I think, that Harold Davis wasn't there, and we know for certain.